Oh hi, I'm the Heretic. It's Cyber Monday, so you know what that means, right? Amazing deals online. You're probably going to buy stuff through Amazon, and it's a pretty good website. Buy candy, clothes, groceries, candy, computers, furniture, candy, everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, you can buy those too. But here's where things get interesting. According to the Seattle Times, Amazon is going to build a second corporate headquarters, a project that's estimated to cost about $5 billion and employ 50,000 people for about a decade. That's 50,000 tax-paying workers who are living in and spending money in local businesses who will in turn pay taxes, as well as drive up demand and ideally incentivize future growth and investment. Put simply, this will help the town the project takes place in immensely. Naturally, they are receiving tons of bids for the project, each offering an incentive for Amazon to build there. For example, Chicago's offering $1.32 billion in income taxes its employees don't have to pay. Oh wait, yes they do. All that money just goes straight to Amazon. In other words, Chicago is telling Amazon that they can get their employees to pay taxes to Amazon. Thank you, Chicago. You're doing such a wonderful job, Mayor Creepy Ballerina. There are other bids that offer immunity from property taxes or just give away land for free. Fresno, California is offering to take 85% of all local taxes paid by Amazon and its employees and essentially let them decide how it's spent. This is corporatism or crony capitalism in action. Businesses provide taxes and economic growth, which looks great for a politician's campaign ad, while businesses get favorable deals which give them unfair advantages against competition. The article goes further, but the point's been made. Local governments are bending over backwards for the privilege of cozying up to big business. Lots of money to be made when creating two sets of rules, one for the plebs and the other for the priesthood of statism and their cronies. Where's our tax breaks, our free land, and our freedom from having to pay property taxes? Why are you, dear viewer, not allowed to choose where your taxes go? It's your money. But wait, this is just one example of corporatism. The article links to another 2013 Seattle Times article when Boeing was given $8.7 billion in taxpayer subsidies over 16 years. Oh, look at that link. I wonder where this leads. Oh my god! Someone's done all the hard work for us and indexed all the subsidies and tax breaks for us to big companies. Look at this. Combining federal, state, and local subsidies, Boeing has gotten over $14 billion, Intel $8 billion, and so on and so forth. I should mention the time periods are inconsistent from company to company, but if you click on them, it links to a page that tells you how early their records go. I would encourage you to browse the site and see for yourself how deep the rabbit hole goes. The links will be in the description below. This is why companies that, by all rights, should fail continue to exist. It's why income inequality in America is skyrocketing. The statist priesthood and their cronies in business are using the force and violence of the state to enrich themselves and each other. They're partners in the crime of picking our pockets. Although what they're doing is blatantly immoral, taxation violating the non-aggression principle, from their point of view, it makes perfect sense. Businesses exist to make money, and they'd be an idiot not to accept a great deal. Similarly, you think just because someone's in elected office, that means they don't want to make money? Of course they do. Certainly a town mayor can grow his own prestige by growing his town and its supply of tax livestock. This set of incentives isn't something that's just going to go away with regulation, electing different people, or wishful thinking. Though to be fair, the idea that regulations or elections will change anything is wishful thinking. Anyways, to change the incentives, you cut at its roots. You eliminate the ability for a state to give favors or money to anyone, let alone a business, and the problem just fixes itself after that. I'm not even saying the state needs to be eliminated, though that would help quite a lot. Once government becomes too small, it isn't worth businesses' time or money to seek out kickbacks. An impotent state is an incorruptible state.